Because it's, of course, been a several hours now since the roof collapsed. And while a lot of crews were on scene earlier today, most of them have left. However, just about an hour ago, this large crane did show up here at the Miller Hill Law. Here at the Duluth Public Library, anybody is welcome. However, library leaders say that sometimes can lead to safety issues. The workers here at the River in Barn Grill say that the flooding has actually been kind of good for business because a lot of people have wanted to come down, check it out, and then, of course, go inside, grab a bite to eat. As for how long one can of Bresky's specially prescribed formula lasts, she says no more than two to four days. Two Harvest Police and other emergency responders responded to this area of Highway 61 just across from the campground and campsite again in Two Harbors for a medical incident that involved a woman in her car slumped over and bleeding. Actually, just behind me here, there are still some shards of glass on the ground. To utilize the electronic scooters, users just have to download the smartphone app that correlates to the brand they're using, unlock it using a QR code, and then they're free to ride. Crews are gone for the day after being out here since, as you mentioned, early this morning. Now, they have boarded up the building with the hopes of encouraging people to stay away. Each kid is given a $200 gift card, which they can use to buy holiday gifts or toys for themselves. Behind me, you can see there are two garages right here that are both slanted to the ground. One car even looks like its back windshield was blown out. If we take a look this way, this tree that is right here, just about 10 minutes ago, crews removed it from this apartment building. Thawing snow, shining sun, and chirping birds, all signs that sap will soon be flowing from maple trees. When we get weather that's consistently above freezing, preferably above 40, where nights still freeze, that's what's great for, for maple syrup making. Doug Halfbauer, known to many in Duluth as Farmer Doug, taps about a thousand maple trees every spring. We typically only get maybe 10 good days a year where the sap really runs. He says he's optimistic about this year's sap production. Our concerns this year goes back to last year's drought and if the trees actually made up enough sugar reserves through photosynthesis to have those stored in the roots to start this season. I think we did. Halfbauer says the tapping season usually lasts about six weeks and can begin anytime in March and go all the way up until the end of April or early May. If you have a small number of trees, right now would be a great time to start. Kathy Burgess co-owns Burgess Family's Sugar House in Duluth. They tap about 2,500 trees each season. Burgess says for beginners, getting started is easier than you might think. It's a really fun project, especially if you have children. It doesn't take a lot of investment to get started. Family fun and a way to connect with the outdoors. And this is an opportunity for, for hobbyists to go and tap a few trees in their yard or a neighbor's yard and make enough for you know for your Sunday morning pancakes you can pour some of your own syrup. Tapping out of winter and into spring one maple tree at a time. A weekend of thrills, fun and lots of history thanks to many different airplanes. The Duluth Air Show returns with 15 acts soaring through the sky including a North American B-25 Mitchell, a historic World War II plane. It wasn't doing area bombing, it was designed for other missions and it was constantly being adapted for missions throughout the war. The Minnesota wing of the commemorative Air Force helps preserve and restore historic combat aircraft. They say preservation allows them to teach people about the nation's history. Our mission is to educate and to inspire and to honor, to help that next generation understand what the generations before us did for us and the freedoms that we have today. On Thursday, I got to ride along in the B-25, getting a very special look at Duluth and Lake Superior. From World War II planes to modern aircraft, the Duluth Air Show showcases the best of aviation. Major Kyle Oliver flies the number five F-16 jet for the United States Air Force Thunderbirds, who are making their return to the air show after last performing in 2018. The fan favorites perform maneuvers all throughout the sky. Uh, what you'll see from Thunderbird 5 and 6, we are the solos. We're going to show you what the airplane is capable of. So we're going to show you how low it can go, how fast it can go, how tight it can turn. <laughs> show for the crowds, but Oliver explains at the end of the day, it inspires a sense of camaraderie. And all of us are here to be a beacon of excellence. We're here to rally people around us uh, as a beacon of excellence in the name of service to something bigger than ourselves. Uh, and I think that's a universal trait. <laughs>
Trinity Dairy Farm in Sturgeon Lake usually has its milk supply picked up every other day, but its location can make accessing the farm difficult. Our farm is bordered by two rivers. We got the Kettle River and the Moosehorn. They meet back behind our farm. So what happens when you get a lot of water, the Kettle River overpowers the Moosehorn and it just backs up. Last week, the road to the farm was flooded, making it impassable for the milk truck to pick up supply. Farmers Allen and Jennifer Klayeski say the milk could be stored for four days. Um, and so we waited four days and that still couldn't get through, so we wound up dumping it. Thankfully, the Klayeski say their co-op reimburses 75% of lost milk in the case of a natural disaster, so they only lost out on about $400. If it would be continued, you know, where it would, you would be getting into, you know, three or four times where you'd have to dump it, um, that, that could be, you know, pretty hard to swallow. While peppermint here is too young to be milked, the cows who are old enough are milked twice a day, once at about 5 a.m. and again at 5 p.m. They're milked every day regardless of if pickup is possible. In addition to flooding, Trinity Dairy had other weather concerns like snow pileups on roofs and the potential loss of power. The Klaski say losing power and being unable to milk is one of their biggest worries. Some of the local farms, if you're milking, you know, upwards of 75 or more cows, that's not something you can really do by hand anymore or anything like that. Yeah. So power is pretty important. While the Klaski say they're grateful more product and money wasn't lost due to the flooding, it's a good reminder to everyone that farming never stops. The farmers, no matter what the weather is doing, that they are still out there producing the food in, you know, even if it is a two foot amount of snow or a four foot blizzard, we're still out here in the barn milking cows. In Sturgeon Lake, Larissa Millis, Northern News Now.